The average person can only survive for three minutes without air. So it's obviously the most critical part of surviving any major disaster where the air is less than breathable. And knowing this, many people still fail to prepare for the smoke from wildfires or burning buildings, the chemicals from industrial accidents that can form deadly vapors in the air, or even the toxic dust clouds that can occur with so many disasters. And when people take that step to ensure that they're safely breathing, they can still make mistakes when purchasing a mask. In this video, we're gonna address the six most common mistakes individuals make when it comes to selecting, purchasing, and using masks or respirators. So let's start with the most common. Number one, not buying a gas mask. The first mistake hands down that most people make when considering purchasing a gas mask has to be not following through with their purchase. It's an item that you hope you never need, but if a critical situation arises, it will make all the difference for survival. Three or four years ago, I would have considered a gas mask a nice item to have, but maybe not something I would consider as critical. However, with the events of the last few years, I would no longer consider one of these a nice have item, but increasingly becoming a necessity. If you were downwind of the Ohio train derailment in March of this year, you might have wished you had a mask on hand. If you were one of the unfortunate millions who recently suffered under a blanket of toxic smoke from the Canadian wildfires, you know what I'm talking about. While a simple N95 mask is only a start, it's not gonna get you through most disasters because it only filters out particulate matter in the air, not gases, vapors, or other toxic elements of smoke. If toxic dust or chemicals get on your skin, they may burn you. If you breathe in those same chemicals in just a fraction of the same amount, your lungs could shut down or trigger your body into a choking and gagging response. And if that doesn't kill you, it can cause damage that can take weeks or years to recover from, if you recover at all. Now, if one of these conditions strikes that can damage your lungs while you're hunkering down or fleeing a disaster zone, your chances of survival drop significantly. If you live near a manufacturer that stores massive amounts of chemicals, you might give strong consideration to one of these. Now, additionally, a gas mask isn't always just to protect you from chemical warfare gases. It can also protect you from viruses and other contagions. It can provide you with breathable air to escape a house fire. It's gonna be vital to you if you face any chemical, biological, radiological, or nuclear event, all of which are, and I hate to say this, increasingly becoming possibilities in this world that we live in. Number two, buying old or surplus gas mask or filters. When I first got serious about purchasing gas masks for myself and my family, I planned on just heading down to the Army Navy surplus store to save some money by buying an old surplus mask, which leads us to our second point. The second mistake many people make is buying an old or surplus mask. And let me add cheap mask into this category as well, because the principles that I'm about to outline here apply to those as well. You have to really be careful with these. Honestly, unless you're highly knowledgeable about inspecting gas masks, I wouldn't suggest you purchase a used or old mask. Why? Well, leaky seals, gaskets, hoses, cracks, and decayed or structurally weakened rubber can render a mask useless. And without the proper equipment to test and the knowledge to evaluate one of these devices, you're not gonna know what to look for. The mistake here is that you would be buying a mask that you know nothing about, unsure of exactly what to inspect, and then expecting it to work as it was intended to when it was created. Over time, rubber seals and filtration mediums, they can deteriorate, and the mask might be completely useless. Do you know how to spot these issues? And more importantly, would you put your life on the line with this option? Military issue surplus masks are widely available and have gained popularity as costume items, but it's important to note that these masks do not provide reliable protection and are likely well beyond their operable range. Often they were mass produced in millions with basic quality controls as they were meant to be temporarily issued or sometimes for single use. And they often have a limited lifespan where their use is guaranteed, but they may be well past that date by the time you look to purchase that item. In other words, the mask materials may have been selected for the design because they would remain effective for a finite duration. And even more problematic is if the mask was used at all by their previous owners, not stored correctly or played with, 
they could have minor defects that will have deadly consequences when you try to use them in a disaster situation. I would question the reliability of any mask that was used in military training. I can't imagine that it was used gingerly. If a gas mask was used as intended and the filter was utilized to combat radioactive substances, mercury, highly toxic substances, low boiling organic substances, tear producing and irritating substances, dangerous microorganisms, or carbon monoxide, it should never be used again. And if you can't change the filter on the mask you are buying because they're no longer newly being manufactured, you're probably not gonna wanna use it and instead purchase something else. All filters over time are gonna lose effectiveness with age. And there are some preps that I'm willing to buy used. For example, something like jackets, maybe a backpack, knives, guns, flashlights, or other miscellaneous items. But the two items that I would probably not buy used are water storage containers and gas masks for the reason that I just outlined. Number three, not having the correct filters. The third mistake people make when they buy a gas mask is to purchase one that doesn't fit their needs and circumstances, primarily when it comes to filtration and filters. Is your biggest concern a pandemic? If so, something like this P100 filter can handle this issue accordingly. Or are you looking to prepare for chemical, biological, radiological, or nuclear, or CBRN, threats that require something more advanced? Does your family live in an area prone to forest fires in an urban center that might be targeted for attack? Does a nearby manufacturing plant use toxic chemicals in its manufacturing? Do you live within 10 miles of the train track where toxic chemicals are transported? Your biggest concern will determine the minimal filters that you should have on hand. And like all things, the more capable you need the filter to be, the more money you're gonna have to spend. So you need to consider this up front. Filters come in different types, and each are designed for specific purposes. Particulate filters are the simplest form and effectively remove solid and liquid particles such as dust, smoke, mold, bacteria, and viruses. These filters will simply have a P and a number on them to designate the level of micron filtration achieved. The higher the number, the more capable. For example, this filter says P100 compared to this filter, which says N95. These can filter out dust and biological hazards down to the microscopic level. However, they are not effective against gases and vapors like carbon monoxide or combustible fumes. At the highest level of filtration are CBRN filters, which stands for chemical, biological, radiological, and nuclear. These offer unparalleled protection against a wide range of hazardous substances. These filters shield against threats like organic compounds with low boiling points, mercury vapors, acid gases, and radioactive metal iodides. Primarily used by professionals in extreme conditions such as civil defense personnel and first responders, CBRN filters are indispensable for defense against chemical, biological, radiological, and nuclear hazards. There are other types of filters built for specific filtration needs. It can get a bit overwhelming when you start to consider all the different options, but I'll post a link below to a website that goes into a lot more detail that explains all the different considerations when it comes to filters. Let me just summarize this section by saying this. If you want something that's gonna handle most uh, threats that you, might, that you might face, a CB RN filter is gonna be your best bet. If you live in an area where smoke is an issue, something like an N95 or a P100 is gonna be your best bet. Also, these are good for dealing with issues such as pathogens in the air. Again, you don't have to go on the high end, but if you wanna make sure that you have the widest range of protection, a solid gas mask with a solid filter is gonna be your best bet. Also, filters have a shelf life. You're gonna to wanna to consult the expiration and manufacturing dates, which should be listed somewhere on the filter and replace any old filters in your inventory. You wanna pay up and purchase new filters from reputable manufacturers. Old filters have been constructed with a range of questionable materials. Some even have asbestos. Remember, this is your very breath. It's crucial to your survival. Your filter should be vacuum wrapped. If it isn't, reactive elements, even carbon, will have reduced or completely destroyed the usability and efficiency of the filter. You're gonna to wanna to store your unopened filters with your mask and you're gonna to wanna to know how to attach them. And not to be too obvious here, but you should ensure that the filters that you purchase fit your mask. Filter compatibility is critical. You may find a great deal on an older mask that is out of production, but do they still make filters that fit it? Or are the filters hard to find and expensive? 
And for most watching this video, your best bet is to go with a mask that is configured to accept a 40 millimeter threaded filter, as these are the standard size used in NATO and thus easy to find. Number four, not fitting it. The fourth mistake people make is never properly fitting the mask when they receive it. A gas mask is only effective if it tightly seals around the front of your face, your nose, your mouth, your eyes. They've got to be sealed safely away. And if you have facial hair like I do, you're going to have a problem getting a proper seal. If your mask is for an adult, it's not going to fit a child. And if your mask that you got for your child a couple of years ago, there's a good chance that it's not going to fit anymore. Let's discuss properly securing this on your face. Bring it up to your face, putting pressure on your chin with one hand while using the other hand to secure the straps around your head. Once you have all the straps tightened, check the seal by covering the filter and inhaling to ensure the mask collapses against your face and grips your face properly. If you feel air rushing in anywhere on the side of your mask, that means you have to tighten a strap to secure the area where air is coming in. To perform a positive pressure check on the gas mask, Cover the exhale valves and create positive pressure by gently exhaling. Again, tighten any straps necessary to ensure you're not getting any air flowing out of the side of the mask. I would encourage you to conduct any additional fit tests recommended by the manufacturer. You're going to need to inspect and maintain this gas mask on a regular basis, replacing components and different filters according to the manufacturer's instructions. Number five, buying a non-certified mask. Another mistake is to rely on the certification of a mask that is a decade or more old. Purchasing a certified gas mask is crucial for several reasons. Certified gas masks, they guarantee performance and effectiveness. These masks, they undergo rigorous testing and evaluation to ensure that they meet specific standards, providing the intended level of protection against various hazardous materials. By opting for a newer certified mask, you can have confidence in its performance and trust that it's gonna deliver the necessary protection when it matters the most. And these masks are designed, they're tested, and they're produced to meet specific performance criteria, providing a higher assurance level than non-certified alternatives. And again, this is why I don't recommend you pick up the cheap Chinese made ones on Amazon. They're just not gonna have the same level of certifications of the ones that have gone through these exhaustive testing. Now, an older mask may have been certified decades ago, though the standards may have changed and the mask may have deteriorated since it was initially tested and certified. And this is why I don't buy the discount mask, again, from Amazon. And as I mentioned earlier, there are a few things I'll cheap out on when it comes to preparedness gear, but this is not one of them. Number six, never practicing. The sixth and the final mistake people make with their gas masks is never practice putting them on in the first place. Just as you might have a fire drill, every family member should know where their mask is, how to place a filter on it, and how to fit it, as I just mentioned a second ago. Many soldiers and civilians during World War I and II, they died from chemical or biological attacks simply because they couldn't access their mask in time or they didn't fit it properly. Gas masks, they can feel claustrophobic and they don't make you feel like you're breathing entirely freely. You're not gonna wanna have to deal with the panic of that experience on top of the panic of whatever disaster that you're trying to make it through. There are many reasons to practice putting it on and wearing it for a bit. You're not gonna have to go as far as taking the seal off this to screw it into the mask to properly ensure that you understand how to thread this in. They're pretty big threads, so it's not that difficult. You're gonna have to trust that the filter that you do have that's manufactured to do what it says it will do is gonna do it when the time comes, which is again, why I recommend you buy a certified filter from a reputable brand. Don't cheap out on the brand. You're gonna to have to take the time to ensure the mask fits properly. And practicing with the mask at least once yearly will guarantee that when you absolutely need it, you're at least familiar with it, efficient with fitting it, and comfortable and confident wearing it, and that you can affix it to your face quickly. It will let you see any flaws that you may have developed, like cracks in the rubber seal or the straps that fasten it to your head. You're gonna to wanna to conduct visual inspections of the mask for any signs of damage, such as cracks, tears, or worn out straps. You're gonna to wanna to store the mask as you would your ammo. You're gonna to wanna to store gas mask in a clean, cool, and dry place away from direct sunlight, extreme temperatures, and chemicals that could deteriorate the mask material. Proper storage really helps maintain the mask integrity and extends its lifespan. 
The very best gas mask and filter is, of course, the one that you never need to use. You should take a look at the real threats that we've talked about on this channel that you're likely going to face this coming year and next, like the wildfires and the possible next pandemic, and decide if this is a time to consider adding a mask to your inventory. I've done other videos in the past on gas masks, and I'll put links to those below along with other materials that will give you more in-depth analysis of things that you need to consider, such as filters when you go to make purchases. I'll put links to some of the products that we covered in this video along with other products on the market that you may want to consider. As always, stay safe out there.